Uh. We're entering a new time uh. where no one can hold us back from uh. voicing our honest opinion. We want a world where we're safe to be ourselves. <laughs> Night in Miami. Rated R. Watch now. Only on Prime Video. Casey Jones, you better watch your speed. Trouble ahead, trouble behind. And know that notion just crossed my mind. This old engine makes it on time. Leave Central Station about a quarter to nine. At Trevor Junction at 17 2 at a quarter to 10. You know it's driving again. Driving that train, I'm cocaine. Casey Jones, you better watch your speed. Trouble ahead, trouble behind. And you know that notion just crossed my mind. together and do a big festival and rather than do it at one site I said uh, we're going to travel the country on a private train. Well the normal mode was to go into a city, fly into a city, do the show and then leave. So this was, uh, you were kind of uh, like a traveling circus. I uh, wanted it to be a party so I put uh, um, amps and uh, a Hammond B3 and a drum kit in the bar car and I set it up like that. It was unusual because you never expected to, to open a passenger car door and, and see a band playing, you know, and, there, and microphones and cameras and it, it was uh, it was not only a concert on the stage, it was a concert for the entire travel. The phrase has become common now about leaving your ego at the door. We left, we left our egos at the station, quite frankly. I had a hard time getting CN to agree to rent me the train. Originally, they told me that uh, I'd have to uh, go from uh, west to east. And I said, uh, you know, no way. 
Let's go west, young man. And just imagine putting a bunch of crazy musicians together and, and telling them to go have a good time. Try and have a good time. Not a problem. I knew that this was going to be our home for the next week. You know, I said, wow, what an adventure. I thought, this is really in the spirit of, uh, of, of the music and of the times, you know, and trying new things. I said, this is going to be exciting. And the people they had on there was exciting <laughs> as the train ride was. It was a train full of insane people careening across the Canadian countryside, making music night and day, and then occasionally we'd get off the train and go play a concert. festival was an ingenious one. Instead of like getting everybody from all over the continent and everywhere to come to one place, it would be like the mountain would go to Muhammad. Like you would take this festival to the various places. And it was a great idea, except of course by this point, 
it had reached Canada, the idea that all these festivals really should be free. Just in front of the festival, we received this leaflet that told people to boycott buying tickets for this festival. And it said that, you know, this, you know, this is our music, $14 is an outrageous fee, and the festival should be free. As I recall, there were some people who were quite vocal about thinking that the musicians should be playing, we should be playing for free, regardless of the expense that it takes for us to get there and, and the fact that we need to uh, make a living, and details like that. I had $27,000 worth of pay duty police, 400 men a shift, and I had uh, them on horseback. Um, and I had a good relationship with the police department. So I knew I was going to be facing protesters, and um, I was prepared for that. There are a hell of a lot of people out there. They're having their heads busted by the pig. And why don't he made his money? Why don't you let them in now? You can get any more money. See what I mean? The pigs are on the inside. He's a pig like the rest of them. Hey, could uh, everybody calm down for a minute? Uh, oh, wait a minute. Hold it. We're trying to do something, and, and Jerry Garcia would like to explain to you exactly what we're trying to do. Uh, the thing we're trying to do is organize another sort of scene that we can have here, and uh, we would like if possible, man, to have like about a half hour of just coolness so that we can work something out that would be an alternative to all this hassling and see if we can avoid getting people hurt. You have to remember, man, that somebody put their neck out to put on a festival here. They didn't have to do it. All this stuff is like uh, voluntary in nature. Now we're trying to make, put on a free stage, man. You don't have to go for it. You can believe it or not, but that's where it's at right now. Be back in a while. I talked to uh, Superintendent Art Walmer of uh, uh, Metro's Finest, and I said, uh, there's a little park uh, not far from here. Why don't we set up a free concert over there? And um, he said, uh, no problem. He said, good idea. Um, we finally got it all that together that we were talking about before for the people outside. Here's Sam Cutler, the manager of the Grateful Dead, to explain it all to you. Uh, what we've managed to get together is two flatbed trucks, and we'll be over in uh, Coronation Park. It seemed to us as long as we were there, we could go ahead and play something for free, and we did. I set out from Reno, I was trailed by 20 hounds. Didn't get to sleep that night till the morning came around. I set out running, but I take my time. A friend of the devil is a friend of mine. I get home before daylight, just might get some sleep tonight. These kids came without money in their pockets. They had no intention of paying. So uh, just to get them uh, away from the gates so that paying customers could make it in was uh, really in my best interest. And uh, I didn't mind doing it. You know, the word was out that the protests had, you know, fucked the promoters. And that uh, despite the music and despite um, the pleasure that the people who were attending were having with the music, um, it was going to be a financial disaster. But I'd like to see them, you know, get as many people as can possibly come because it's a there's a fantastic amount of great great lineup of talent, you know. Yeah, you know, it's if funny. You figure, if you figure, people say the tickets are too high, but if you figure, it's a it's less than a dollar per super group, you know. Folks, the band. <laughs> Oh! 
I think the promoters realized this was a lost cause, that they weren't going to make a profit. And whereas some promoters might say, to heck with it, you know, they said, well, we're, we're on a train, let's go for it. They knew how hard they were bleeding right from the first Toronto concert. And they must have known, based on the numbers, that they weren't going to make that back. But they never held up on anything for the artists. You know, when we were in Montreal ordering the train, they were going to give me a cafeteria car. And I said, I don't want a cafeteria car, I want a proper dining car. And uh, this is like uh, the Orient Express to a lot of these uh, musicians. And I said, no, I want uh, snacks at night, and I want decent sandwiches, not spam sandwiches, and not bologna, and not peanut butter and jam. And I said, if anybody says uh, that they've gotten up uh, late and they want breakfast, you'll make it. Somebody on the train said uh, Woodstock was a treat for the audience and the train was a treat for the performers. I mean, you would get up, people would be playing, you'd go to sleep, get up again and there'd be another group of people. There was no escape. I mean, the only place you could go really was to your room, but sometimes you needed a rest, go back or to sleep. But, so it's kind of like, like this little La Boheme society, you know, and people really began to appreciate what it was and love it. It was 24 hour a day, it was non-stop, so it was great to have that opportunity to actually hang with some people that, that you liked and would never normally get to spend much time with. That awful day of judgment is coming in the by and by. We'll see our Lord descending in glory from on high. Oh, let us keep in touch with Jesus. Let us praise the love of God. Baby, in glory when it calls over Jordan's time. Oh, look at that cold joy. Look at its deep water. Look at that wide river. As you know, there was the blues car, the country car, the folk car, whatever. You know, you could drift from car to car and get involved in any number of jams, that, some of which really really did amount to some pretty heady stuff. You could walk in and you didn't ask me what I was playing. You just looked at me and I looked at you and I nodded my head and vice versa and you played. And you didn't say play it like this or play it like that. You just uh, uh, got in there some kind of way, you know. <laughs> tried so hard, but I just can't do it, baby, no, no. I can't do it, baby. Yo. Well, Lord, I tried so hard, but I just can't do it, baby. Oh, no. Made me mess up my happy home. <laughs> well, girl, it was, I believe, two and a half days from Toronto to Winnipeg. And for any musician that was on this train, it was like heaven. So, you know, we've spent an, uh, it's a focal point. A very enjoyable two days riding this train uh, with the groups 
uh, jamming um, and uh, and being together, uh, unlike a lot of other festivals, you rush in and you rush out and they don't see each other. Um, they're here and we're here all to make all to make a living and to provide entertainment. Uh, when it gets to the point where where uh, where uh, kids is in Toronto uh, want to become uh, violent, it doesn't go hand in hand with the kind of entertainment the groups want to provide and we want to provide. And all these kids got uptight because the admission was too high and they decided they were going to have a riot. They busted some cop's head, man. They busted it wide open. He's got a plate in his head now and he may still be in critical condition. Is that worth the 16 fucking dollars? How many kids got busted wide open too? Who started it? Usually, Nobody got busted. Nobody no got, kids got, got busted. No, no, kids no. Got busted. No. 22 no. kids got arrested because they jumped the fence and it was against the law. They weren't supposed to. One kid. But when you play, you pay. Is that worth a $16 ticket? Is that worth $16? Nearly killing some cop, you know, and nearly they, killing they, they a person. Boss. Listen, let me tell you And those something. cops I'm up there, I talked to a lot of them, and they were all boss. They were all good people. The basic thing that the Saturday papers, and I guess they caught the last bit before the <coughs> papers went to run, all they showed was, uh, uh, well, one, one shot I know that was used as a national photo was a policeman's horse rear up. They forgot to tell you that somebody threw pepper at them, and at the horse. Um, they forgot to show you the uh, shots of the kids that were inside the show enjoying it. There was 40,000 people in there that had fun. You must have talked to the 2,000 outside the gate trying to get in. Oh, the 2,000 outside the gate. Let me see something. Wait, I want to show the camera. I want to show the camera. Take a look at that. <laughs> must we put up with yellow journalism? People in Toronto demanded uh, we let everybody in for free or or if we wouldn't accept that, they were willing to accept 60% of the gross ticket sales, which they would distribute as they saw fit. Well, that was nice. <laughs> and also they wanted free food and free dope. <laughs> <laughs> These people weren't looking for free music, they were looking for trouble. They were looking for an excuse to bust cops' heads. They were, you know, pathologically anti-authoritarian. I know, I'm, I'm that way myself. The press picked it up. And uh, there was a movement formed in Winnipeg, and then one in Calgary. So uh, ticket sales were not uh, doing very well, mainly because of the protesters. So we lost uh, a significant amount of money, and um, the bands all knew it. I said, you know, hey, let's carry on and party.
Buddy Guy. Buddy Guy.
Will you welcome, please, the Flying Burrito Brothers. It's a lazy day. Put the load right on. 
That you could ever say It's just old Luke and Luke's waiting on a judgment day Well, Luke, my friend, what about old Anna Lee? He said, do me a favor, son, won't you stay and keep this Anna Lee company? I take a load off, baby, take a load for free Chester followed me and he caught me in the fog. He said, I will fix your rack if you just take Jack, my dog. I, I said, said, wait, wait a, a minute, minute, Chester, you know I'm a peaceful man. He said, that's okay, boy, won't you feed him when you can? Your cannon boy, now to take me down the line. My bag is sinking low, and I do believe it's time to get back to Miss Betty. You know she's the only one who sent me here with a curly guards for everyone. And I want you to take a load off, Betty. Take a load.
that the grass always looks greener when you're looking in somebody else's eye. But honey, you know the real thing we're waiting for you at home. I saw you did. I had a man. He said, honey, honey, you know that I love you. See, but I, I gotta go find myself, you know, I gotta go find my life. I gotta go by find myself over in Africa, or over in uh, New York City, or over in uh, Olima. Some place those cats are always wandered off to. I never figured out exactly where it was. <laughs> I was going somewhere, man. And I said, baby, don't you realize you're looking for your life over there, honey? You know where your life is? Your life's waiting like a goddamn fool right here for you, man. And one morning you're gonna wake up in uh, Casablanca, one of those fancy places, honey. You're gonna be freezing to death, man. You're gonna wake up and you say, Good, good, Lord. Good, good, God, Lord. I just went off and left that woman in that great big, huge double bed with a great big fur rug on top of it. No satin sheets, man. What am I doing in Casablanca, man? I mean, really, man. One of these days, that cat's gonna wake up and say that to himself. And when he comes back home, there, yeah, just like a Capricorn that I am, I'll be standing there waiting. Man. Said, baby, I knew one day, and I knew, knew, knew one day, oh, as you finally come on home to me. Honey, when you walk through my front door, I'm gonna be, be able to tell by the look in your eyes. I say, good God. That man finally done got it. Lord, that man finally done realize. So you can put your head on my shoulder, baby, yeah. Cause I know you got some more tears to shed, dear. So come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. left Winnipeg, he was like, can we leave now? You know, everybody just wanted to get right back on the train. We went back on the train and then we had an overnighter uh, to uh, Calgary and uh, that was a long one, but, but nobody really noticed.
seemed that time was sort of suspended. You know? like usually, a performer wants to get there, get his job done, and get home. In this situation, you wanted it to go on forever. <laughs> I couldn't keep up with them, man. They was potted all night long, and I said, I gotta go to sleep, man. Every time I went to bed, I thought I was gonna miss something, and I said, well, I gotta go back again. And I wouldn't, as a matter of fact, I couldn't even just stay in the bed for an hour. This train was not for sleeping. It was for a lot of other things, but not for sleeping. Very few people slept on this train. Most all of us were new to drinking at that point, too. We'd all been taking LSD or smoking pot or whatever. And uh, this was a, a new experience for a lot of us. And uh, it, it worked just fine. The uh, CN guy uh, came to me and said, uh, they've drank us dry. And I said, uh, well, where's the next stop? And he said, we're not scheduled for a stop. I said, you are now. Uh. So I told everybody on the train, um, they've run out of booze, but we're making an emergency stop. And uh, then we passed the hat. And if I remember correctly, I think we collected about $800. So uh, we made a run on the liquor store. Then on the way out, I saw up on a shelf a display bottle of uh, Canadian Club. And uh, so I said, uh, I looked up and I said, I'll have that too. And he said, it's a display bottle, it's not for sale. I said, it's for sale now, and if you don't climb up and get it down, then I'm going to get somebody to climb up and bring it down. So when we got back to the station, uh, the guys that were with us, uh, the performers that were with us, were absolutely uh, ecstatic. They did run out of booze, and uh, they did stop in Saskatoon, the whole damn train stuff, like in front of a liquor store. And they bought the place out. So the ride that night, I mean, there was a party you couldn't believe. Somebody doctored that big bottle of Canadian Club, and you could see little gel caps at the bottom floating around down there. I uh, did my best to stay away from that, but uh, even so, there was more going on than uh, at that point than just the alcohol. There were psychedelics involved, and I'm, I don't know what kind or how much, but that that train was sort of buzzing down the the, uh, the rails. We achieved liftoff for sure.
Jerry takes it. Time will say, we'll say Ain't no more cane Ain't no more pain. It's all been to molasses. Thank you, Jerry Garcia. Ah, no, we're great at all, man. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> God bless you, folks. God bless you. Peace, love, truth, beauty. Rock on. Random neighbors. Are we in Calgary already? No. Are we in Calgary yet? We're stopped. Hey, we're in Alberta. Maybe we ought to run out and take a look. Alberta. Alberta, Alberta. let your Alberta hair hang there. Alberta, don't let your hair hang there. No. Man, we're all so stopped, man. We can get off the train and go and buy it. I know folks in Alberta. Janice, I've loved you ever since the day I saw you. I got to tell you. That's what I call the guy's own cuff out, man. <laughs> I don't think we can quit now, man, really. It's got too good. How you doing, Daddy? Oh, yeah, I got it. When we got to Calgary, the mayor was this radical character who came out on, and um, and he said in this very kind of grandiose way, I, I demand that the children of Calgary pass through the gates free. Well, the mayor of Calgary decided that uh, he was going to become a big hero to these kids who were also protesting. And um, he came backstage and uh, said to me uh, that... Um, I should open the gates uh, and uh, let the children of Calgary in free. And uh, I refused. So he called me uh, Eastern scum and a capitalist strip off son of a bitch. And my answer is uh, his uh, teeth in uh, my knuckles. That was my answer. Give a hand, shout out uh... We just got one thing to say to you. And that is that rock and roll is here to stay. Rock and roll is here to stay Rock and roll will always be our dream 
Catch a plane, say goodbye to them. Give my hand, please. Aside from some early rain this afternoon, it's been a beautiful day with the temperatures near the 80s, an ideal sort of day for this type of festival. With 6,500 people here this afternoon, the big crowds are really expected tonight. And as we mentioned earlier, this could be the high point of the Rock Festival Express Tour.
another Got to give one way or another, one way or another, one way or another. This darkness got to give one way or another, one way or another. This darkness got to you. We'll have Ian and Sylvia in just a minute, the great speckled bird. I think that certainly um, what happened on the train carried over onto the stage because uh, people just became aware of the possibilities. We ended up in Calgary doing some stuff with a lot of sort of crossovers too and I mean it really was quite extraordinary. Totally unique experience. I've never had one like it before or since. There are a whole series of moments that are kind of crystallized for me. Uh, 
on different levels. Some of them are musical, some of them are just sort of moments. This is the part of this train tour we've been waiting for. something man I don't know where you've been all week but we've been at a party right really a party man I couldn't have thrown a better party man I finally met someone who can throw a better party than me and I would like to bring them on stage and tell them thank you just from the performers man okay we got Thor Eaton, and Ken, Ken Walker. Walker, and Dave Williams. Right. I want to get him on, man. Get him on and give him a hand, because they sure showed us a good time, baby. Hey, John Cook, where's the thing, man? John, John. Wait, wait. We happen to have a few presents to give these boys. The first one is a genuine train that's labeled Festival Express on one car 
and bar car on the other car, because that's where the action was, man. And this is from everyone, and it's signed by everyone. This box is from me. It's a case of tequila. The train is for remembering, man. The tequila is for continuing. All right. All right. We give these people a hand, please, who we'll put this entire thing on. This is from us to you, baby. You're welcome, baby. Just thank you for coming. Hey, man, next time you throw a train, invite me, man. <laughs> everybody does. I figure if you're a woman, and if you're really a woman, 
You already know what you need, man. You already know what you're looking for. Man, I found out at 14 years old. And I've been looking ever since, too. But if you have to be a young cat, you know, like about 17 years old and about this tall, right? If you have to be a young cat, man, and you ain't figured it out yet, I'll tell you what you need, baby. When you get those strange thoughts in your head, you don't know where they came from, man. You got those strange little weirdness that's happening to you, you don't know what they are. I'll tell you what you need. You need a sweet loving mama, babe. Honey, sweet talking mama, babe. You need a sweet loving mama, babe. Honey, sweet talking mama, babe. You need somebody to listen to you, someone to want you, someone to hold you, someone to need you, someone to use you. Someone to want you, someone to need you, someone to hold you, someone to want you, someone to hold you. You need a mama, 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 baby. Go to mama, 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 short a time but it seemed to go on forever when you were there but it, when it was over there was a sadness there definitely was it was uh, it was a great experience it was better than Woodstock as great as Woodstock was and people who've heard of Woodstock would go well that's impossible because they didn't know about this train you know it just was a, a, a brief moment in time when everybody came together for one last time to celebrate that utopian vision that we all started with. It was a truly wondrous uh, time to be a musician. You know, people took mu music seriously, and uh, the prospect for music be becoming more than just uh, entertainment or diversion. I'll carry it the rest of my life, that I'll never get the chance, that chance to be with Jerry and uh, Janice again, and things like that only happen once in a lifetime. A magnificent uh, historical event occurred in, in the history of rock and roll and music, and everybody knew it. I think the lesson I learned was that I gave the public too much, and uh, they didn't deserve it. If I was to do it again, I wouldn't uh, do it to that scale. And I'm thinking of doing another one. You know, this train was happy until we stopped. Yeah, yeah. let's roll! It's the truth. Onward and upward. This, this train, we hadn't had a newspaper, we hadn't had a bath. But this, this, this train was groovy. Yeah, we were happy, man. Maybe we had a few bits, but we had some good times. And then we had to stop. Sinner as you tread the last journey, 
Take Jesus as your daily guide Though you may feel pure and saintly Without him walking by your side When you come to make the crossing At the end you know this pilgrim's way If you ever will meet your Savior You'll surely need him on that day Now look at that cold, cold Jordan Look at its deep, deep water Look at that wide, wide river now you better take Jesus with you He's a true, true companion Oh I'm so sure without him That you never will make it for That awful day of judgment Is coming in the by and by We'll see our Lord descending In glory from on high Come to nature with Jesus And in this precious love of God He may be ever called ready When he calls over Jordan's side Now look at that cold, cold Jordan Look at its deep, deep water Look at that wide, wide river Oh, hear the mighty billows roll Now you better take Jesus, Jesus with you He's a true, true companion Oh, I'm sure, sure without him that you never will make it home. Now what? What you gonna do? And what? Oh, what you gonna say? And how? And how you gonna feel when you come to the end of the way? Thanks a lot.